look at this masterpiece. Quite frankly, it's a work of art. The Red Bull RB19 has not been beaten this season. Two different drivers have won driving this design, but it's a design that is changing. Red Bull are trying to make the unbeatable even more unbeatable. A major upgrade has been introduced here at the Hungarian Grand Prix, and it is really visually obvious. And actually, far more interesting than a few people I think on social media have really picked up on. So come around here and let's take a little bit of a closer look at what's changed on the car. Because the most obvious thing you're going to take a look at are these side pod changes. The side pod duct here is almost like a letterbox where you put your post in as you're taking it off down to the shops or whatever. Complete redesign of the side pod inlet duct. The shape underneath it has been completely changed. Much bigger undercut right along the floor edge. And we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. But I think it's really important to note that such a dramatic and drastic change to a car like the Red Bull is really, really important because a few people up and down the pit lane, myself included, didn't expect a huge amount of technical development on this car. And the reason for that is Red Bull, of course, won the Constructors' Championship last year, which meant they got the smallest amount of CFD, the virtual wind tunnel, and real wind tunnel testing, the smallest amount of aerodynamic development time for any team on the grid. And then they got that cost cap penalty, which made that aerodynamic development time even smaller. So compared to, say, Aston Martin, in the first half of the season, Red Bull only had half the wind tunnel allocation of Aston Martin. So you wouldn't expect a huge amount of development to be available for Red Bull to introduce new components on the car. Yet this is the second major update to the side pod of the car. But what Red Bull have done here is quite interesting because they've read the rule book and that's a really important thing to do. So by changing this side pod duct, what they've also changed is everything that's underneath this side pod. All of the coolers, all of the radiators, all of those heat exchangers, everything related to cooling the power unit has been changed. And the regulations are really interesting on this point because when you change those parts, when you develop new radiators, you develop new ducting underneath the bodywork, that does not come out of your wind tunnel or CFD testing allocation. You've got absolute freedom. You can develop, you spend as long as you like in the wind tunnel developing the radiators, developing the ducting to the radiators, as long as it's related to cooling the power unit. There are some restrictions on what Red Bull could have done. They're not allowed to put any force measurement, so they can't, gener they can't measure how much downforce that may be generating, but they can measure the flow through the side pod, they can measure the temperature, they can measure the different air pressures throughout the side pod. So they can learn a huge amount about how these new side pods will be working. And that's what they've been doing. That's how they've been able to introduce this dramatic upgrade to the car. What they will have had to use some of their wind tunnel allocation for, though, are these parts around here, around the leading edge of the side pod ducts. You've got the new wing mirror design, much lower because this is a slightly wider side pod. And then they've also had to change the lip. And you can actually see when you get up close, you can see where the parts have been modified. Because of the cost cap, it's cheaper to modify parts. You can see that bits that don't look very perfect. That's typical of the 2023 F1 cars because they're restricted by the cost cap. So, cheaper to modify an existing part and make it tighter up here than build a completely new part. That saves some money on the cost cap. And then this whole section, all of this undercut, that will have taken up a chunk of CFD and wind tunnel time as well. So it's not like they haven't used their wind tunnel allocation. They've just been really clever about how they did it. And that's not the only changes they've made to the car because this is the Hungaro ring, bang, bang. And it's this one of the slowest circuits on the calendar. It's high downforce, but as you can probably see from people in the background on my own forehead, it's one of the hottest circuits of the year. And that's not a place you'd want to introduce a major cooling system change. And to my eye, when I first saw this design, it looked like they'd actually reduced the amount of cooling on the car overall. That's not the case. I think Red Bull have been quite clever here. They've widened the side pod duct slightly and made it narrow. What's happened there is it's changed the pressure of the air entering and going into this expansion behind that very tight duct. And I wonder if they've been reading a technical paper on the design of the de Havilland Mosquito World War II plane, which had a side pod duct or a cooling duct on the wing of that plane that actually allowed the whole duct to actually create 
a little bit of thrust. It wasn't a drag inducing part. So clever ducting design can actually really help the overall aerodynamic performance of the car. It reduces drag. But the low speed, high downforce, high temperature nature of this circuit actually means there's been a few other changes. Now, Steve, follow me around here and you can have a look at some of the little detail bits and pieces. Come this side, Steve, because if you look down there, underneath where it says hard rock on the trailing edge of the sticky over wheel bit, you can see the brake duct exit. Now, the brake ducts here are a big factor. Look how intricate that design is. It's almost like, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's like a little bit of paper or something. The human brain to create a shape like that is pure artistry. And actually, I think AI helps out a lot of engineers now with these new shapes. CFD, computer processing to be able to change that. The other big change on the car, and this is probably the most important change. Yes, the side pod duct change is really visual. It's really different looking. But the real crucial factor is down here. Red Bull have made massive modifications to the floor design. Look at this longitudinal element. Now it's really sculpted, how it sticks forward. Now the lower section of the floor isn't all that different in overall terms of the shape and the concept. But look at these little sticky over bits, I guess you have to call them. The design of that, getting that to work, getting the floor to operate the way the team really want it to is super, super critical to getting the most performance out of the car. And when I talk about the tiny details, come and look at these little tiny sticky uppy bits that sit over the floor. That's what, maybe three or four millimeters tall, this little link wire section here. That is such tiny, intricate work. And you might wonder, well, how does that make a big difference to the performance of the car? Well, it does, but you have to measure it. Don't forget the wind tunnel model is 60%. So all of these small parts have to be made on a model and then reduced down to 60% of full scale. So you imagine the shape of that at 60% of full size. The model making required to do that is absolutely huge. I make my own 143rd scale models. To make a 60% model of that would be almost impossible for my skills, whatever 3D printing you use. So that's real sculpting as well. A question that a lot of people have been asking as well, this new side pod structure, much thinner, much underneath the O of Oracle here, you can actually see it's much higher, huge amount more space under the side pod and out towards the back of the car. You can see this bulge just here, that houses the lower side impact structure. But where's the upper side impact structure? With Red Bull constantly changing the leading edge of the side pod, you might think, well, the, lead, the, the forward side impact structure must be up here and they keep changing it. Does that mean they need a new chassis each time? Well, no, you can't see the upper side impact structure because it's in here somewhere and it's not really moved. So no changes to the monocoque. They keep their costs under control in that way. Then we come around towards the back of the car and they've made a change to the rear brake duct cooling fins, as we like to call them. They're winglets, really. They generate downforce directly. Nothing to do with brake cooling, but everybody's been doing it for years. I think Ferrari, the first people to exploit this area. These new cars, everybody's doing it. These have been significantly modified for this circuit. But the really crucial part for me is you can see directly up the rear here, you can see the team have opened up all of the cooling at the rear of the car. And that's because the, the cooling structures have been changed significantly because of the change further forwards, new side pods, new underbody airflows have been quite significantly changed. And that is a massive difference. But check out this tiny little detail. It's the last thing I want to talk about on this car. Just above the drive shaft section here, you've got a beautiful little aerodynamic element that's generally missed by everybody just on the edge of the gearbox housing there. Lovely little bit of detail, superb work by the engineers at Milton Keynes. So it does look like the unbeatable could have just got slightly more unbeatable. However, as Ferrari showed us really clearly in Spain, Aston Martin have showed us and other teams have showed us, when you bring a major upgrade to an F1 car, it's not always going to work first time out of the box, particularly if you don't have the aerodynamic development allocation of everybody else in the pit lane. Will this work well for Red Bull? Well, so far they haven't made any missteps. Perhaps this one is the one that will let them down.